Well, hello, and we are back. Yes, day ticket travels, spring edition. The last time we were out, it was freezing cold, but the weather's a bit better now, isn't it? Sun's oh, out. Last time we was out was this for blue, grim, blue, absolutely grim. And we've come up north, and it's a long way up north for me and you, isn't Man, it? I needed a, a passport to get here. <laughs> I swear to God, I needed a passport. We're up at the fantastic Embryo Norton Disney Complex now. It's due to open very, very soon. I've heard a lot about it. This is the first time I've seen it. Got to say, I'm very impressed so far. It's lovely, it's isn't enormous, it? It's enormous, isn't it? Yeah. Absolutely. It's like a maze like, getting around here, but yeah, it's, it's beautiful. It mm. is beautiful. A lot of lakes here now. I've literally just up, arrived up here this morning. You got up last night, mate? Got up last night. Didn't start fishing until this morning because it was dark when we actually got to park there. Um, threw a bucket of pellet in this morning. I've had half a dozen fish. So it was a, like a two hour manic a spell of, of mid doubles they're all lovely carp mate yeah, so yeah, yeah. we're hoping obviously look at it now iron bright and it may be this evening if not i think tomorrow morning we'll have the same spell mate so um yeah it's really yeah, nice go. these fight these fights so hard for mid doubles mate on it but i've got the depth there yeah, deep lake isn't it goes down to about 30 foot there so it's it going to be a really really interesting challenge fishing deep water fishing somewhere that neither of us have seen before yeah it's going to be an interesting one this one for sure let's get on with this have it there's a fish I want that one. <laughs> I don't want that one on that one. Turner's Lake on the embryo complex of lakes. Never seen the place before. Got here yesterday. It was dark when we actually drew up behind the peg. Uh, so we didn't fish. First light I was up and throwing a float around, a marker float around, which I don't usually do, but I've been told that this is a very deep lake. Uh, out in front of me, anything from 40 to 50 yards, we've got 30 foot of water because I'm in a corner, little corner here, um, over to the far margin, which is an obvious place to fish, I found eight and then 10, 12 and bump down to 16s. So I've put them in the eight to 10 uh, foot area, which is a couple of rod limbs off the far margin. I ran around there this morning whilst the float was in situ and put out a, a, literally a whole bucket of the Complex T eight mil pellets. Within an hour, getting bites. Now I had half a dozen fish this morning, uh, probably a two hour spell, and I'm guessing then they'd eaten it all. Now, again, we've not seen it before. I know there's a lot of fish near, so it's not going to be very challenging angling, but it's going to be a bit of fun. We hopefully get a few bites because we struggled on the last one uh, in the winter when my hands are actually blue. So six bites this morning in a, in a, in a short period. We've got, the day has gone quiet now, so this evening I'll put another whole bucket there hopefully in the morning or throughout the night, get a few more fish. So um, all mid doubles, fight like tigers, really enjoying it. Rob's tips up, um, nice bit of a social. And, and you know, we don't want any challenging fishing this, on this one. Let's just have a laugh, go through a few bits with you guys, catch a good few carp. With the sun getting higher in the sky and the action having slowed I decided to take the opportunity to bring in all the rods, put fresh hook baits on, and make sure they're presented in the best possible way up against the slope. out across the water more and more fish seem to be patrolling up and down the bank and with my freshly presented hit and runs right on the patrol path I just knew it had to be a matter of time.
angry, angry little common. First fish, I put a tin of maize out of the far margin and just put one of the rods on that with a little yellow hit and run. And that's the first bite over it now. It is by far the smallest of the day, but it has bought four or five hours of inactivity to an end. And he is angry. Look at that fin up. So, oh, where's your big brothers and sisters? But most welcome and of a dull Rods, two of them out of three, are now out. So when I got here, uh, Ian's already in next door. He's had a couple of bites off that far margin over there and there's fish showing on there, but I don't have that tree line margin in front of me. I've got a nice bit of open water. There is a bit of a margin on the left-hand side that I'm hopeful there may be a fish or two on later on, but basically my off the peg is that open water bit out there. Now, we've been told it's quite deep, down to 30 foot in places. So the first thing that I wanted to do was just get a marker float out, find out, one, how deep it is. Because obviously at this time of year, a lot of the time the fish are gonna be up in the shallower water rather than in the deeper water. And if it's 30 foot, I don't wanna be down on the deck down there. So I'm looking for something that is a reasonable depth to fish in. Now, at this time of year, a lot of the time it can be the shallower the better. Uh, we're just starting to get that turnover. There's lots of weed on the bottom, all the dead stuff that's been dying through the course of the winter, all that is starting to lift up. And if you look in the edges, a lot of the time on lakes now, you'll see stuff coming to the surface. You don't want to be fishing in that, where that gas, the methane is expanding and coming out. You really don't want to be in there. And sometimes that's happening in the margins. So you don't want to be too shallow at the moment, but equally, you don't want to be too deep. So I'm trying to find that middle ground. Mark flow's gone out and I've had a quick flick around and I'm finding 15 feet more or less everywhere apart from one hump in line with like a little metal container over there. 19 wraps exactly to the top of it and it's 11 foot which I think is a really really good depth. I can stick a zig on top of it if I need to so I'm gonna, you know I can come up a bit closer to the surface. However I want to get these fish down on the deck if at all possible and an 11 foot hump in 15 foot of water is, is, is a pretty good spot at this time of year, I think. There's, if this fish gonna show around here, then I would think that they should drop down to that depth. So I've taken a reasonable amount of time to find that spot as well. I, you know, I, I think the, the art of the marker float is lost these days. A lot of people talk about wraps, a lot of people talk about depth, but you don't necessarily know what the spot's like unless you're feeling it down and getting that marker float coming back up and feeling exactly how deep it is. So I know how the hump is now. I took ages just plotting it. There's no fish there at the moment, so now is the time, or early this afternoon, there was nothing there. They're all over there. I think they're gonna move over at some stage, or fingers crossed they will. So really, loads and loads of cast, just feeling it coming back over the top. When I cast out with the float, I feel it down and you'll notice I sort of hit the clip and then I follow it through a little bit with a rod. And then I'm feeling for that donk, that crack down. And as soon as it's donked and cracked down, then what I do is I give it a little skip, just skip it back up, hop it back up a little bit and drop it back down from sort of that high. In my head, the lead's coming back about a foot and I just donk it back down again, just to feel double sure that it's not just one spot it's landed on, but it is an area. So float comes up, found this nice little spot. And then it's a case of getting a rod on the top. Now, with a marker float, obviously it's going down on braid. And you can feel a lot more on braid than you can on nylon. But I'm casting out by eye. So I'm trying to put it just behind the float. I know from previous experience, I'm adding probably a foot for every five foot. So if it's 11 foot there, I'm casting two to three foot behind the float, getting a little bit of bounce back, a little bit of spring down. But more importantly, I'm just feeling that lead down I'm feeling for the best crack that I possibly can on nylon. So I've got two absolutely bang on that spot and I've spotted over the top of it with basically oily pellets and some boily in there as well. Because these fish are fed on pellets, hopefully when they come over the top of that spot, they'll see this food down there, they'll go down and they'll graze on it. They're gonna be pack fish as well. So there's quite a lot of bait out. I've put probably three quarters of one of our buckets out. Uh, and that's just pellet, bit of oil over the top of it, a few boilies in there, and I'm fishing 
a Ronnie with a yellow hit and run pop up over it. And I'm fishing what I call a reverse combi rig. So basically a choddy on a supple link, uh, cast out just to the side of that, tram line by the side of each other, probably four or five foot apart. One on the top, one just to the left hand side and just behind. So the line lays lovely on that hump out there. So if fish come over that hump, you know what? They're gonna see me bait because they stand out. I know the bait works. I know these fish are gonna like pellets. I reckon that if they go over there, I should be in for a whale of a time. And I reckon I'll get a few bites off that as well. With the rods finally out for the night and the sun setting, it was time to kick back and enjoy one of Steve's famous barbecues. Well, that was a splendid barbecue. <laughs> That's you know the what, most Rob? important thing. I, I will give Mrs. Co. Oh, credit yes. where it's you, the, yeah, the yeah. kebabs she could supply commercially. And Stephen's skills as a chef, he's obviously learned from his mother. Yeah, that's a win. Yeah, that is Thank definitely a win. So Mrs. Co. Yeah. We love you. We love <laughs> we do. you. So, no, great barbecue. You know, great afternoon fishing for yourself and a day fishing for myself, Rob. So, um, but unfortunately for you, when you tipped up, it, 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 it sort of, that was the end of it. It had stopped for the day, hadn't it, really? So. It's, it's funny how it goes, isn't it? You know, these the little bite times that you get. Yeah. So you've had a you've had a splendid morning. Yeah, mate. And then it's just dropped off. And I Nick, snuck that one out later on this afternoon, just from that tree Tiny little car. See, the, I mean, the, the way the lake is, I, I ch we should have had 30 each. But sometimes they drift off you, mate. You know, it's, it's, it, it's a big lake. It's very deep. No excuses, had, well, 11, had 11 bites, you know, how can, that, how can that be excuses? And hopefully tomorrow morning will bring a flurry for both of us. I think one of the things for me is that certain lakes have certain bite times and we see it from Raysbury as well, first thing in the morning, particularly yeah. at this time of year, is hours, absolutely brilliant. And, and that morning feeding spell, hopefully they'll come tomorrow morning. Yeah. You know, traps are set, positive for the night. Uh, there's obviously a lot of fish over there. Or yep. they were earlier. Yeah, well, yeah. Seem to be smallish. Hopefully there'll be one or two big ones yeah. showing at some stage. Yeah. Let's talk about baiting approach as well, because a lot of bait has produced a lot of bites. Well, I, I've changed on one rod now. I've gone over near that the landslide with 20 mil uh, complex seed boilies yeah. and a 15 mil pin kit and run, because all I've had is mid double and down, yeah. and I just hope that might pick up a better one, like than a 20 pound or something. Yeah, yeah, and that's, you know, the baiting approach has a massive effect on the oh size my God, of fish yeah. catch, doesn't it? Yeah. Without any shadow yeah. of a doubt. I've only got two rods fishing. You're I've waiting got a for a third them. one, and what I'm doing with that third one, I've got solid bag tied up, and I've been waiting now for about an hour and a half, two hours, just to see something show. Mm. And, you know, there's a lot of bait. I'm tramlining on one spot over there. It's a hump in that slightly deeper water. Mm. The risk with that is, of course, either I've put too much bait in if there's just one fish moving around, or alternatively, a pack of fish will come in, they'll be small ones again. Yeah. So I've got that, just that little chunk of food that if I see one, I'm going to chuck it out yeah. towards that. And if not, I think it'll probably go out on that corner somewhere. Uh, yeah, and I reckon, you know, that's a similar sort of thing to you with fishing for bites and the potential for a slightly Yeah, and, and, you know, gradually switch tactics on one rod to hopefully yeah. pick up a better fish slot, you know. See how it goes. So that's we'll see. it. Mm. Dropping dark now. Um, be nice to see a bit of nighttime action. Be even better if it was first thing in the morning. Yeah. Good night's sleep. I think Wake so, mate. First thing. I think I won't snore tonight. Mike said <laughs> I snored last night. Yes, he will. But I've done so many nights um, around with clients and raised me of late. I was overtired, yeah, yeah. and I was literally roaring last night. Mike said so. Shame is he's bibbed right at the top tonight, so it'll be you. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> no, I'm not as tired tonight, but yeah, great day, mate. And, that, and um, that was one. And let's see what the dial cows bring. Um, or for hopefully nothing, and we'll have them in the morning. As the last of the light dropped out of the sky, I punched the solid bag across to the left-hand margin.
things are looking up. First light had one about 16, 17 pounds. Felt we should have had more, so I skipped back round there then when the rods were in and put in another whole bucket, which is probably six or seven kilos uh, of eight mil complex tea pellet, which is by far my favorite. Real meaty smell to that one. And this one loved it. Now, half hour later, low 20 mirror. This one thought, it's so deep here, this water. It fought so hard, I was convinced it was a real whopper. But it is a whopper compared to what we've had. So hopefully now, this is a sign of things to come. We've got another day and a night, and hopefully a group of these 20s is what's merching about out there now. Our first mid-double of the day. It's a nice little chunky one. Pink hit and runs over the complex tee. And when I put this one back, because you've munched all my pellet, I shall be wandering back round there while the rods are still in, and sticking out another whole bucket of eight mil complex tea pellets, because they seem to be loving it. I think this is about fish, about number 15. Had one fall off in the night. And there you go. So we've had about 15 carp now. Let's hope we get some of the bigger boys moving on the pellet. Down we went, Steve. Well, having seen so many fish out in line with that, what's happened to the landslide on the far bank, um, leaping about. Now, I did mark a float it yesterday, and it's 16 foot, and I tried a 12 foot zig out there, but nothing. So I changed this morning. There's so many there. This is a, a six foot. And I did joke to the other cameraman yesterday when I put a black bit of foam out, which we all know gets most bites on zigs because it actually looks a bit like a bug or something. To be fair, Mike, the other cameraman, said, why don't you put a yellow one on? I'm going to give him credit on that one. And I said, quote, the bugs when they leave the lake bed wear safety helmets, a yellow one. And anyway, I've changed to a yellow one this morning, six foot, although we haven't got this in yet because I've got quite a light hook link on it. Um, and we've got our first zig bite. Six foot is the one then, mate. It's got to be that they feed them pellet that gives them all this energy, isn't it? They're just mental, mate. Right. Thank you. First one on a zig. Put a six footer out, there's so many showing along that side wall. There was always, there's got to be a bite to be taken. It's just getting that zone. It's 16 foot deep there. So I had a 12 footer out yesterday, nothing, dropped it lower today. Bang, another low 20. But look at that, for me, that so far is definitely fish of the trip. Scaly banger, this side's a linear as well. I'm made up with that fish and this thought like it really thought we were going we to eat you, weren't we? It locked me up off this marginal shelf, which is a bit of a pain. Walked out the bank, got her moving. Look at that. That is an absolute beautiful embryo carp. Well, it was a quiet night for me on that spot. Nothing at all showed. Didn't hear anything through the course of the night. Uh, got up in the middle of the night, had a little listen. Nothing doing at all. The bag, I threw one for the corner over there, nothing again. So I was feeling a bit sorry for myself this morning, to be honest, as you do, you know, you set your plot up, you think everything is absolutely bang right. And I was hoping those fish would move over from that side this way. And quite frankly, they didn't. So this morning, Mr. Russell, true to form, straight into fish again. There's quite a few over that side. So I've changed one over. He moved on to a zig and picked the bite up pretty quickly. So obviously the thing to do when you know what the fish are doing is just follow suit. So I banged a zig out, chucked it over to where I'd seen a few fish on that right hand side and it's been out about 20 minutes. As the rain started to pour, it didn't take long before my first Turner's Lake carp was in the bag. So there he is off the mark. First bite and it came on a zig. 
And it's a little bit of opportunist fishing actually, because there were uh, nothing showing direct out in front of me. But this was the result of 20 minutes in the right place with a black and yellow zig. A right dumpy little thing, this one. He's going to be a tank when he's a bit bigger. That's for sure. Mid, upper double, I'd say. 17-ish pounds. But one of hopefully many to come. After slipping back that dumpy mirror, it was clear that the fish were reluctant to move from the snag tree. So I decided to up sticks and move to a new peg, which gave me more access from the other side. As I set about getting my gear set up and my rods ready, Ian was clearly up to something. Up to something I was. With the majority of the fish hugging a tree that had recently fallen into the lake, I decided to walk a rig round and hand place it to ensure perfect presentation. After hand dropping the rig in place, just two small handfuls of maize and one of pellet was all that was needed and I was confident of a bite. Well, there's a surprise. I've had, we're only allowed one zig on this, on this place at the time. So my last bite this morning, ironically enough, was on the zig and I have persevered. We've been doing a few rig bits um, and this is just absolute, whoa, absolutely tore off. I don't like even fish line, you know, but on these light zigs, you've got no choice. Come on. And these are fighting like, they really are manic. But yesterday afternoon, I had a small common. Yes, bottom bait yesterday afternoon, off the far margin. But it was about this time, mid-afternoon, so all is not lost. But you, I mean, this is the type of weather you would expect to get one on the zig and not on the bottom. After about three minutes into the fight, it all went solid. And try as I might, it just wouldn't give. And shortly afterwards, the rig gave way. Speaking to Ben, the fishery manager, he said this was likely to be a small route coming through from where the lake had recently been drained. Ever the opportunist, I got the rod straight back out, hoping I wouldn't have to wait too long for another opportunity. A few minutes later, my HD5 gave out a series of bleeps and I was connected to another hard-fighting Turner's Lake carp. This time I was taking no prisoners and was straight to the back of the peg where I could keep steady pressure on the fish and keep it away from diving down. After a short battle, the fish rose from the depths and went into the net first time. With the fish safely secured in the net, I wasted no time getting the zig straight back onto the spot as there was clearly a few fish about and it looked good for another bite. Being prepared and getting the rod out straight away can be the difference between one and multiple bites when the fish turn up on you. Now there is the culprit of my last zig bite. Lost the one prior to that, got snagged on the bottom out there. We lost about a foot of the hook link. Uh, bear in mind it's a barbless venue, so that'll be spat, but I still don't like to lose them. But we did only lose a foot of hook link. So I did give this a bit of punishment, and in he came. Nice little low double. Now we've been here a couple of days now. I mean, we've worked it out anyway. You know, we just want to catch fish for the camera in different methods. So now it's a zig each, which is all we are allowed, and a couple on the bottom, but on the real shallow shelf. I walked along there earlier, place the bait in the edge. Uh, there's so many fish up and down that shallow bit. It's, it's, it's unbelievable. I can't believe it ain't gone actually. It's been out for a couple of hours. But I'm enjoying getting the odd bite on a zig. Now I know it's 16 foot coming up to 12. So I've changed it. I've got six footers out. So a six foot zig out there now, my little mate. And um, it's done me, I think my third or fourth bite today on a zig. So all on yellow, even though you're not going to believe this, I'm a carp angler and an idiot. So I've just changed the yellow to red, because if it gets a, a quicker bite or a bigger fish. And there you have it, a lovely little mirror carp, mid-afternoon, blazing hot sunshine, he's going back. Back in my new peg, I cast a zig just down the shelf to target the fish that were patrolling up and down the margins in the upper layers of the water. From a second rod, I walked down the bank and dropped it on a lovely gravel spot just in front of a freshly fallen tree. And the third rod was cast just down the shelf. Right then, I've moved and we've had a right mixed bag of weather. One minute, it's chucking it down with rain. The next minute, it's almost short weather. 
and I was over there just in no man's land and all the fish if you have a look down that edge down there you'll see one Mr Russell sneaking up and down with the bucket and the shovel just throwing a bit of bait in the edge that's where he's been picking them up from down there and there seems to be a reasonable number of fish here so I've moved on this peg now little chuck down the margins out into open water uh, one on a zig others just down on the deck around that tree and just down the marginal shelf and fingers crossed now that's going to put me in with a chance of catching fish uh, just before I moved over there I did have a bite uh, just as it was chucking it down with rain earlier uh, I thought I was packing up ready to come over here unfortunately it fell off these things happen uh, but I think there's more of a chance of me catching fish here than over there and like anything you've got to get on them uh, it's lovely having a social but I'm here to try and catch some fish and to catch fish this is the area that we need to be in almost all of Ian's fish well, actually all of Ian's fish have come from the area where he is now just between a post and that tree there so game on now hopefully it's going to be evening and into nighttime action not a lot happens through the course of the afternoon I think Ian's had one chance yesterday uh, he's had one chance today uh, I'm now in the zone fingers crossed see if we can get a couple of fish out times is it said two minutes in the right spot I walked around that side wall while Steve watched the rods because I've had a bait over in that margin for hours in clearly the wrong spot I walked to another five yards further down the bank and there's a, a proper gravel clear bit oh, I just got to keep keep this one moving proper gravel clear bit so in all fairness to Stevie he held the rod and I walked it back round there, literally lowered it in, lowered it in with an handful of maize. <laughs> I can't believe that was only in there a few minutes. Nice fish, nice fish. Going out from look at this undercut bank and they're going right under there. <laughs> that is better. That's fishing, not not waiting. Okay, when you're sitting behind the rods, it, it we can't help it. It is waiting. But that little walk round there, clocking there must have been 20 fish in an area the size of a ground sheet to walk all the way round there. While Steve, to be fair, Steve held the line out of the water, lowered it in amongst them, out with the maze, back here within 10 minutes, wallop. I do like working for them. It's brilliant. Up he comes. Right. The result of five minutes in the right place. I nipped round that side to rebake the other rod I put out earlier. It was all still there, so it wasn't necessary. I walked like five or ten yards further down the bank. There's a bit, probably the size of a ground sheet of gravel just off the edge. With about 20 of these milling round it. So Steve held the rod. I walked all the way round it with the line out of the water, lowered it in, out of the maze. I'm giving him probably close to 25 pound that fish it's chunky and heavy so like we said four hours on that spot five or six minutes on that spot well worth the work having felt I'd found a winning formula I was quick to get back round and replace that rig the beauty of dropping a rig by hand is that I'm able to land on the perfect spot time and time again after dropping a couple of handfuls of maize over the rig, I had just enough time to walk back round to the peg before the rod was away yet again, and after another hard scrap, I had another scaly turn as late carp. Back in my peg, it had been a frustrating afternoon, but my luck was about to change. It's been very quiet for me this afternoon. But we're just dropping into evening now, the barbecue is lit on the other side of the lake. Mr Russell, as always, is playing the carp as we speak at the moment. And we've just had a double take from opposite sides of the lake. Uh, he's been catching down the edge. I've finally got my spot working actually. 
it's, uh, it's taken a while. It's been a bit of a head scratcher because I can wander up into the trees behind, look down on them, and they've been going back and to, back and to. But, you know, this is my first afternoon stroke evening in this bit. Uh, and uh, Ian had the same with his. It was, uh, it was quite through the afternoon. But as soon as it got to evening time, that's when it picked up again, a couple of bites. Uh, and then there was a bit of silliness through the night. So this does feel half decent fish, actually. And here is my one. Look at that, oh, absolute corker. Tell you what, he didn't have to put up the scrap and all. This is a good mid 20 pounder. Absolutely fantastic. And I've got to say, I'm pretty, uh, pretty chuffed to get him. The average size has been reasonable, but this is one of the better ones. And yeah, what a scrap. What an absolute battle this was. After what had been a fairly productive day, I bought in all three rods and cast them back out over the heavily baited area, ready for the night ahead. Huh, what is that? Is that a pterodactyl? That's a pterodactyl peacock. <laughs> This is like being in Jurassic Park. It's lovely up here, I like it. Well, it's I like, lovely. I like it? how wide open it is, and I love the fact there's pine trees everywhere. It feels it's, like I'm at centre park. It's going to be yeah. something fairly special. Yeah, it's pretty good, it? pretty good indeed. Pretty good indeed. Fair play to the boys. It's been but a good today, day today, yeah. Today, do you know what? There is not, I don't think there's a weather front we haven't had today. <laughs> <don't> it? <laughs> well, lunchtime, it was like someone was throwing like eight mil boilies at us, wasn't Mate, it? It's with crazy. A pail. Shorts, bit of sunburn in the morning. Steve had shorts on, yeah, wrong colour. Not but, pleasant. You know, I'm, yeah, I think not he borrowed pleasant. a if, I, thought, I don't know if Steve's got a sister and he bought her shorts on. <laughs> not sure about that. But, we, but on to the fishing. Yes. Um, good day today, mate. Had a few. Mid 20 each. Yeah, yeah. That's not always bad. good, mate. At least always we're nicking nice a couple of good ones now, yeah, like, you know, absolutely. Rather than the low doubles. I've got so, a question for you as well. He says it's not about Steve Schultz. No, it's definitely no. not about Steve Schultz. It's okay. about the amount of bait that you've put in as well, because you've been sticking a lot of bait in. Yeah, how much do you reckon you've gone through so far? Well, I've been putting a lot of bait over two rods, and yeah. then the one I was fishing down the margin yeah. was just a handful for a bite. Like, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Over the other, well, I've done a, at least two buckets each day over them two rods. So what's that? About twelve yeah. k a day. Yeah, that's a lot. Isn't it? You know, a, a buck. Well, I've done a bucket this morning at five o'clock, and I've done another bucket at lunchtime. And all fairness, I've done another bucket this evening. Yeah, yeah. Put the rods back in. So. Yeah, you don't notice it when you're just trickling through it, but actually it, it, w one of the things that's really stood out for me, how you fish this, is the amount of bait that you've put in. And you've Depending kept the fish mate. there, yeah. haven't you? And well, it, they've turned, you know, but, they drift off, Rob, uh, about mid-morning, and I know um, uh, first light is they are there, bang, yeah, bang. Yeah. You'll get two, three, maybe four takes, yeah. then they're gone. Yeah. But know, that's the great thing about pellet, isn't it? Because it's... You know, it's pretty inexpensive to yeah. put in the quantities. If it was poorly, like, you'd think, oh, blimey. I've probably done 25 but, kilos since I got here, if not, if not a fraction more. Yeah, 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 but yeah, I've had a lot of bites. Enough. I've been on the fish rod, to be fair. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, we've had a nice mid-20 each. So yeah, <coughs> that, that's what matters. You know, it's, it's been great fun. Well, fingers crossed for a good night's kip tonight. Yeah, because I was up. Well, I lost a fish at half one in the morning. You got up and it was like that. Yeah. Like a zombie running around. So, um, that was half past two, that one. It was half past two, was yeah, it? Yeah, there yeah, you yeah, go. That's how much a zombie fight. I wasn't even yeah, what time it was. Yeah. Well, but, I've um, moved now and you're not going to keep me awake with snoring tonight. No, no, nor were you. I don't yeah. know what you was doing. It was like a shuffling noise all night. Oh, was it? Not sure about that. <laughs> I don't know what that was. Lasted a long time, anyway, that, didn't it? What happens, <laughs> what happens here stays here, but um, no one else would know that. There's yeah, a secret yeah, no, between us. Right. But let's, yeah, good night's kip. We're off sort of late morning tomorrow, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. A couple more fish maybe each. Uh, get it well, done, I'm looking mate. forward to morning bite time because cons consistently morning bite time has produced a few fish, isn't it? Yeah. You know, what was it? You had five. five no, set. Five first, the first morning. First morning altogether, it was about nine or ten fish but throughout really? the whole morning. Yeah, like yeah. It. Yeah, and then second morning that was yesterday morning, yeah. that was another five yeah, another two fish or three, morning, mate. Yeah. Well, I'm an 18 fish now, so... Yeah, um, blimey. Uh, but, yeah. Yeah, not bad at all. Well, I've got my first proper morning on them tomorrow, mate. so hopefully that'll be official Good night, Kim. Um, Get up at five, rack a couple of fish out, and, yeah. and off by about Disappear 11. before the rain. Before the rain. Yeah. Five o'clock.
o'clock in the morning and I've got to say the view from the new house is just absolutely stunning. Facing east, which is always a nice place for a carp angler to be on a spring morning. The sunrise this morning was just absolutely glorious and also that bit just before the sun come up as well. A lot of the time that's why we go carp fishing but of course the main reason is to catch carp and I had a great night last night and a few runs. Uh, got, a, got a couple of nice ones in the net already and the big question at this time of day now is what do you do? Do you leave the rods out or do you re-chuck them? This time of year particularly going through sort of early late spring early summer is brilliant at first light you know Ian's had a couple of bites both yesterday and the day before today I'm now hoping for a couple as well because I'm on fish so I have actually just recast um, primarily because after I'd had a couple of fish last night I didn't put the rod back out fancied a, a good night's sleep and I'd rather catch them first thing in the morning than through the course of the night it's a really really good time this now this sort of five o'clock through to eight nine o'clock loads and loads of lakes produced so if you aren't absolutely on the money or you've rechucked through the course of the night and you're thinking it's not quite right then now is the time to chuck it out because normally there's fish around so fingers crossed there's another bite or two left we've got a few hours left i've got little yellow hit and run wafters on a german rig at the moment because it's lovely and sandy just off the edge of that tree and that's what's been doing the damage for me so uh, yeah fingers crossed it's bite time <laughs> All right, here's one of the little devils that could not resist a yellow hit and run wafter. Little male, and they're starting to group up now. A lot of these little males just getting on the dance floor ready for you know what, as and when it warms up a little bit. And he's a proper feisty one, this one as well. Cracking, cracking fight here up at Norton Disney, I've got to say. And look at that, in the morning sunshine, after an epic battle in the early hours of the morning, that is a cracking carp. Good mid 20 pounder, once again yellow, and all of my bites have come on yellow, either yellow zigs or alternatively yellow hit and runs. Uh, did try the pinks, but pink wasn't playing the game on this trip, it's all been about the yellow and the pellets and I think that's something to do with the fact that these guys have been fed in the past on maize and also on pellets as well and it's always worthwhile just thinking about that what do these fish normally eat but just look at him real real good scrap and again it's all down to location here if you're not on them you ain't catching them and this just went that little bit closer to that tree the one that's just up the bank in between me and Ian they've not been passing it and has tried as hard as I could. I couldn't get a bite this side, but just going in front of it, that's what produced the goods. And what goods they are, you absolute superstar. Morning, which it is at last. Might look a little bit tired this morning because 11.30, midnight, and 3 a.m. Uh, the two rods fished down this end of the of the side wall lifted up over the pellet uh, three mid doubles so um, I sh I've put them back out again I've re literally just redone them as well because there's always that chance we've got a few hours left yet uh, of one of the better ones in here because there are a couple of 40 pounders and a few around the 30 35 pound mark and I did see a couple of them down the bank yesterday so a few hours yet we'll hang on See if we can't get one of them bigger ones. Right, for this trip, let's talk rigs. I have used this little one. Now, the only thing I've changed, I've alternated between pink hit and runs, yellow hit and runs, or a piece of plastic corn. They all 
lift the hook as so. I've tied them up in Ronnie style and let me explain further, the venue we're on is a strict barbless rule. Now in the world of fishing hooks, a straight point barbless hook I find, and I do use them occasionally, not the straight points, but barbless on the day ticket venues I visit, a straight point is nowhere near as effective as staying in that fish as a V-curve or a wide gape. Okay, so for me, it's the V-curve. If you look at a, an eagle's claw, it's like that. So you want something that's constantly pulling into the fish when you're playing the fish. And the V-curve, I have to say, yes, I'm biased, but let me tell you the truth. They're amongst the sharpest hooks in the entire solar system. So again, a V-curve, or one of our wide gapes, you've got to have that in-turn point when you're playing fish, when you're hooking fish, on barbless venues. Well, there you have it, mate. Another day ticket travels over and done with. Absolutely. It's been quite a good one as well, hasn't it? Loads and loads of action, mate. It, uh, just fish to blinder again. Absolutely yeah, well, brilliant. Uh, you know, it's, it's been on them and not been on them. We, we know that, Rob, for, for, for years you've known it. You were unlucky. You probably worked harder than me, actually, for less yeah. of a result, but that's but, what it's about. But right? average size was actually not too bad for me. Right. It didn't have as many fish, but well, actually had a double, yeah, 17, had a 18 pound up, yeah, uh, you know. Yeah, a couple of decent 20s as well. So, 20s. Yeah. No. It's been brilliant. You yeah. Just, the pellet, I don't know how much pellet I've used. My van, come here like that, you, and now it's going home like you've that. You've used a lot more than me, I think. That's, yeah. that's for sure, you know. But, but it's, um, it's it, Interesting worked. seeing the behaviour patterns of the fish. Interesting seeing how they group up. And when they're on, they're really on. And you've just got to keep putting that bait in them, haven't you? That early morning spell for me, each morning, was... Yeah, was yeah ballistic it was ridiculous but you knew also then you'd, they'd run out you'd run out of bait they'd gone yeah, just got to you get know, it like the bite stopped simple as that and I've, I've seen it loads of times when i've been diving we've looked at various different films as well when they're on it you almost can't put enough in they just keep going that's one of the great things with spare pellet, rigs yeah. spare bags yeah. spare leads just get it in keep the speed up because you've got that to our um, if that to our window and they've mocked you and gone. 100%. And in where I was, and then we went on the Ziggs to be fair, where I was, once they'd gone, they'd gone. Yeah. I knew it would be early morning next morning, yeah, mate. That's it. And so. it, they're, they're, they're quite predictable the way they move. You know, they're in that snag, they've gone, then they're out in the open water. Yeah. And, the, you know, there were some quite predictable bite times as well. Yep. But that early morning spell is always a good one. I was surprised we didn't catch more this morning, actually. You know, after first light, I thought there were yeah. going to be more chances. But there's been a wind direction change, there's been an air pressure well, change, and there's a lot yeah, more sun. In the night, I had three in the night, uh, mid doubles and that I knew at first light yeah, yeah we were also winding down so yeah, yeah, um, yeah. you know we'd had enough fish but I knew at first light they'd, they'd, they'd gone mate they'd ate it all and gone that's it so <coughs> good session go. great place great future for northern anglers in particular yeah. you know well for everybody but for northern anglers it's going to yeah. be amazing having somewhere like this on your doorstep as well so as far as I'm concerned well worth a visit really enjoyed it absolutely see you next time